A karate practitioner who killed a man-eating bear with a single punch. An MMA artist whose name always comes up when talking about the strongest man in the world. An Eastern European monster who could overcome all of humanity's combined might. A jiu-jitsu practitioner who drove the entire Western underground martial arts community on his own. A prodigy who practiced a mysterious martial art. A world-class mercenary who dominated an entire continent. Some random decathlete. And the man boasting the greatest physical might within the Kangen Association. This man defeated them all. His name was the Wild Tiger, Wakatsuki Takeshi. He is the Kengen affiliated fighter for Farima Pharmaceuticals and holds a record of 309 to 3. These three defeats were handed to him by a drug dealer, an amnesiac, and the model used by Pixar to render their milks. Wakatsuki is a man that shouldn't be taken lightly. Now that he is facing Fei Wangfang, a member of the three Demon Fists and possibly the mysterious Tiger's Vessel, I have decided to take some time out of my day to remind you that this man is a powerhouse. One day, Cosmo and Wakatsuki were strolling across the decks of the SS Kengen until they were jumped by these two donkeys. One of them was a dry, feral looking ass, and the other was. Cosmo easily dispatches his opponent by hiding in his opponent's blind spot and then performing a flawless chokehold. It should be noted that his opponent was armed. But then Wakatsuki blows Cosmo's achievement out of the water by off-screening the other guy, immediately running his fade into the side of the sip. Then, he says, pathetic. He broke after just one punch. Within the context of the series as a whole, this single line gives us a very different insight into Wakatsuki's character than what we got during the tournament. This characterization makes him out to be far more sadistic than he really is. Goes to show how much he hates mercs. Murabuchi Gozo is a legendary decathlete who possesses great strength, technique, and most of all, speed. Right out the gate, Murabuchi should be faster than his opponent, but Wakatsuki, a man weighing 426 pounds, landed the first strike against a guy who prides himself on his speed. On that day, disrespect was dispensed on Murabuchi's name. Furthermore, Wakatsuki drilled a spiral into Morobuchi's body. He is seriously pulling some Zunji Ito set without the cosmic horror elements. This just goes to show that Wakatsuki is on another level when it comes to power. However, Morobuchi didn't provide as much of a challenge as his next opponent. Now, Wakatsuki is a complete beast, but Julius puts him to shame. Just at the outset, Julius has far superior physical specs than his opponent and spends the first half of the match eating up Wakatsuki's regular blows while pushing him away with minimal effort, proving that he has greater endurance and equivalent attack potency. Completely outclassed, a sensible fighter would forfeit. But what does Wakatsuki do? He punches harder by unveiling his blast core, a reverse punch backed by the full might of his muscles. It's so potent that even Julius, the only man who could surpass him in a head-on match, was sent packing. But Julius ain't no chicken, and this is out a wave of punishment that can be described as nothing sort of legendary. <laughs> but Wakatsuki survived his savage onslaught and fires off one last blast core. However, it was a feint in order to launch a kick directly onto his opponent's chin. A thank you for the clean fade he just received. This match goes to show that Wakatsuki isn't simply a muscle head. He has the skill and discipline of a seasoned martial artist. Now, Muteba doesn't need an introduction. This is a man that came from the shadows and claimed the life of a talented judo practitioner and even outwitted a veteran fighter in Sekibahasi. Muteba represents a very large threat against the status quo, and he can very easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with even the cream of the crop. So any fighter that faces Muteba must always be on their guard lest they get sacked, especially Wakatsuki, who lost Vision in one of his eyes. 
But what does Wakatsuki do? I'll tell you what he does. He doesn't give a damn. Straight out the gate, he hauls ass. Aggressively stealing the initiative from his crafty opponent and feinting a strike to a successful takedown. Although Wakatsuki's grappling gets handed lots of sade, it serves its purpose as an instantaneous switch from a strike into a guard position. In that aspect, it's similar to Okubo's synergy because it's unanticipated and functions like a surprise attack. Except, without the diversity of locks or throws. Furthermore, if you're stuck in a guard with Okatsuki, chances are you're getting crushed because he weighs 400 pounds. Therefore, Wakatsuki's grappling needs to be recognized as a powerful skill that can alter the course of a match, even if his skill pales in comparison to other grapplers. However, if it wasn't for Muteba's acupuncture, he might have surrendered right then and there. Even so, after his initial strategy failed, Wakatsuki quickly devised a new one. This new stratagem that he produced on the fly involved taking a blow from Muteba in order to launch his blast core. Although Muteba had performed a masterful fakeout with the perceived loss of his vision, he was dancing in the palm of Wakatsuki's fist and was sent to the end of the ring by Wakatsuki's decisive blow. This interaction proves that Wakatsuki can bounce back from failure and is adaptable enough to create strategies on the fly when all of his opponent's cards are all laid out. However, his fighting IQ takes a dramatic decline when his opponent hasn't revealed all that they have to offer. Let's talk about Oma. In his match against Oma, Wakatsuki was incredibly dominant on the feet due to his monstrous power, a game plan to fend off the redirection kata, and Oma's declining health. However, the match changed when Oma launched his first incomplete Demon Spade. Although he was still able to send Wakatsuki packing, it wasn't strong enough to take him out. But at that moment, the error didn't belong to Oma. The one who made the most decisive error of all was Wakatsuki. Rather than becoming overly cautious of Oma's mysterious technique, Wakatsuki made the critical decision to ignore it and end the match with his strikes, basically becoming impatient. Considering Wakatsuki's lack of awareness of Demon's Bane, this was the right decision because the alternative would have enabled Oma to recover from Wakatsuki's initial momentum. But in retrospect, this was his ultimate downfall because his ignorance enabled Oma to land the decisive Demon's Bane to end the match. However, with Wakatsuki's new experience with the Nico style, the outcome of this match could have easily sifted in Wakatsuki's favor. Instead of steadfastly sticking to his strikes at the end of the match, Wakatsuki sort of performed the same fakeout that he used against Mutaba. Due to its nature as an instantaneous switch between striking and grappling that inevitably targets a blind spot, no amount of kinetic vision would enable Oma to predict it. Considering Oma's far inferior strength and Demon's Bane's nature as a counter to strikes, there is no way Oma is escaping a guard from Wakatsuki, especially at that part of the tournament. But as it is now, the outcome of the match has clearly been decided. For this next part of the Kingen vs Purgatory tournament, please show our boy Wakatsuki some support. Although we all know he's gonna lose, there will only be 4 people in the Kingen universe to defeat Wakatsuki out of 313 bouts within the Underworld, a record only rivaled by the likes of Kano Ajito and Tsukaba Tune. Apart from our expectations, Wakatsuki has already proven his might as a martial artist by defeating Julius, a physical freak of nature, and Mutaba, one of the smartest fighters in Kingen Astra. For these two feats, Wakatsuki deserves your respect. Thank you for watching, if you like Kingen content, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the notification button. As always, this was the cyborg whale named after Italian cheese and a dessert item. Goodbye.